Hi, got an interesting question for you. Is this $800 oscilloscope overkill for a hobbyist? Now, this question was raised on the EV blog forum. In fact, uh, almost similar question twice in a last couple of uh, days. And it is actually an interesting question. If you're a hobbyist, uh, you know, you're a beginner, you've got an interest in electronics and you want to buy a scope, you want to equip your lab, you're all excited because you discovered Arduinos and you want to, you know, equip your lab and everything and you want to buy an oscilloscope. How much is overkill? Now, obviously, if you're filthy rich, of course, well, you know, <laughs> there was a thread years ago on the EV blog forum, everything's on the EV, it's Test Equipment Central, um, where somebody was going to spend like, I don't know, like, how much was it? Like tens of thousands? Like five digits for an oscilloscope or something like that? It was like, like, it, oh, I'm buying my first oscilloscope and it's, oh, I have to dig out the archives. Anyway, I'm not going to look for it now. But yeah, I, you know, some people don't think anything about spending, you know, a couple of thousand. Oh, I need an entry level oscilloscope. I'm going to spend a couple of thousand dollars on it. And well, you, no, you don't have to. I'm going to, right off the bat, I am going to say that. Once you enter the four-digit price category, i.e. over $1,000, that is overkill for a hobbyist or even for, you know, just setting up any general purpose electronics uh, lab, really. Now, of course, totally dependent upon what you're working on. So we're talking about just a general purpose daily use oscilloscope. You just want to look at some signals, you know, you want to debug some stuff and, you know, you might want to do some serial decoding on it. And yeah, you might want a, a logic analyzer built in to do some mixed signal analysis. You might want a couple of hundred megahertz bandwidth to get some, you know, a, a faster edge signals. You might want to do some FFTs on it. You might want to do some, you know, signal measurement and analysis and stuff like that. But in general speaking, a general purpose scope, you don't have any specific niche requirements. Like you're not going to be looking at one gig signals. You don't need your one gig bandwidth and your active probes and everything and uh, go off into, you know, crazy land. So I would say that this Rigol MSO 5000 is about the upper uh, limit of what I would consider, of where I would start considering overkill for a hobbyist or a general purpose lab scope. I mean, look at this, for 800 bucks, right? You're sure, it's only, and this is the entry level model, of course, 70 megahertz bandwidth, four channels, but it's eight gig samples per second. You get 100 meg memory depth. It's got uh, a touch, uh, high res well, higher resolution, uh, to, you know, nine inch uh, touch screen on it, um, mixed signal analysis, analysis, logic analyzer. You don't get the active probe inputs and stuff like that, but you generally don't in sub thousand dollar, um, you know, three digit uh, price category uh, scopes and stuff like that. It's got HDMI out and it's got LXI LAN and all sorts of stuff, although most scopes have that these days. You know, 41 measurements, you know, 450,000 waveform updates per second or whatever, right? It's a, <laughs> you would be hard pressed to outgrow this scope. So I'll put this at the upper limit. Now, the poster on the um, EV blog forum, the original poster actually already has a Rigol DS1054Z uh, and he's got a budget, you know, about 800 bucks. So he's kind of like eyeing off um, the uh, MSO 5000. It's pretty much uh, the Siglent ones. Like, yeah, you can get the uh, Siglent ones, for example, this SDS uh, 2000X plus scope, like really nice scope. But, you know, you're talking a different price, uh, you know, a different price bracket here. Significantly more coin and stuff like that. That does have um, not active probe interface, but it's got auto times 10 detection and stuff like that. But that one's outside the price category. And price categories are everything when you're talking about scopes. But what is overkill? Okay, like the 1054Z, that he's already got now, right? Perfectly usable scope. Uh, right at like at the uh, low end, I would say that it's the Rigol, you know, everyone asks me all the time, which scope should I buy? I say either the 1054Z or it's the uh, Siglent um, SDS 1104XE uh, um, here, which is uh, Siglent's equivalent uh, one. Although this one is a bit more um, expensive. So the Rigol's a little bit cheaper than that. You can actually get the two channel model here for only 379. This is all uh, Yankee prices, all US prices, okay? I know they prices vary in different uh, regions around the world. I'm not even gonna bother uh, covering those. So my advice these days, as I said, back when the 1054Z was re released, uh, once you've got a four channel scope for 400 bucks, 
you don't even think about buying a two channel. Just like I, I wouldn't even, unless you had some really niche requirement where you wanted the extra features for and, and you're squeezing under some budget thing, but yeah, I can only afford two channels. Well, maybe, but in, in general, don't buy a two channel scope anymore. Now, interestingly, price brackets, okay, um, started out when I bought my first scope, okay, it was. 800 bucks Aussie bucks but you know work with me right it was pretty close back then I think uh, parity to the US dollar anyway this was a Kikasui COS 5020 20 megahertz dual channel um, analog crow as we call them here in Australia none of that dual time base rubbish either single time base I kind of like lusted after this one which was the 40 mega is this the f yeah this is the four no that one only had the single time base there was a dual time base model as well and you know I eventually get the uh, got the uh, COS 60 100m um, which is like a 12 trace oscilloscope oh hang on 6100m oh yeah here's this bad boy look at that 100 meg um yeah it you could actually get 12 traces on it with the expanded time bases and stuff you could like yeah and trigger view and all sorts of stuff anyway i eventually got one of those but anyway that yeah 800 bucks right was the entry level uh, price and then the first affordable digital scope on the market for like the entry level like hobbyist thing was actually the Rigol DS1052E and surprisingly you can still buy it $389 but it was actually introduced at around about the $800 uh, price point. Not many people know that, but way back um, before I started the blog, um, when this thing uh, came out, it was yeah, it was you know it was groundbreaking. You can for under a thousand bucks, you could get a decent dual channel. You know, it was only fifty meg, and it was you know primitive and uh, like the user interface, and it was slow, and it was a but it was just amazing that you could have get a two channel um, you know digital scope like a proper bench scope for under a thousand bucks. But then it eventually became dropped to the four hundred dollar uh, price point, and then that's when they came out with with other models and the Z and then Siglent came along and all sorts of others. Um, yes, there are cheaper oscilloscopes on the market. So let's just talk about that for a second. Um, uh, yeah, like you can get them for less than 400 bucks. You can go cheap, buy one of those cheap ones from AliExpress, the no name it, you know, you get the hand techs or the, you know, whatever, like there's lots of weird and wonderful ones. You can probably even get them for as low as like just over 200 bucks. Oh, okay, here it is. Look, here's like a hand tech, uh, you know, two channel one for you know, 200 bucks like just as I said just to, oh look at this right you can get this thing right oh it's a nursey fursy one right um did you if it's as bad as their little handheld ones, no. Right, you can get these for 150, 200 bucks. I, I wouldn't recommend it. It is a, it's worth actually just climbing up that ladder a little bit to get um, something, you know, around about the 400, 350 to $400 price point. I think that's worth it. But the question is, is it overkill? to go from something like this to buying something like this. I don't think so. I think it'll be a decent upgrade because the uh, original poster on the forum, he could of course sell this because they um, keep their prices, you know, reasonably well. You can get a couple of hundred bucks for this easy uh, by reselling this and then the price of this and upgrading uh, to this. But I don't think this is overkill. And this is, uh, you know, this would last you as a general purpose scope last year the rest of your life really as long as it doesn't break down um it, it pretty much last you forever unless you got some specific niche requirement for an everyday use oscilloscope in your lab like you can't beat having four channels like this and remember this thing can be hacked to the full 350 megahertz bandwidth uh, with uh, and four no 200 meg points and you can get the logic analyzer you get all the serial decoders and you get everything else it can be hacked to 350 meg and really for a general purpose scope you're not going to need anything more than that and also the good thing about this is that it has separate controls here okay for the four channels once you start going over to your you know your sort of like higher end scopes like this one they tend to yeah you'll get your four channels but then they combine them all in the one vertical control like some people prefer that but like for an everyday use scope it's just it, it's nice if you can like it, it's just a bonus i think if you get this separate uh, controls like that. It's just nice. So, you know, and it's got the arbitrary waveform gen as well built in as this dual channel. Arbitrary, I, I can't remember. I don't have uh, this model anymore, but I did a video on it like four years ago or something when it, it first came out. So unless you have some specific niche requirement, this is going to last you a very long time. You'll never need more than 350 meg. <laughs> Who needs more than 640k of RAM, right? Um, but no, like the thing is with bandwidth, once you get over like, you know, 300 meg or something like that, you can push it to 500, right? From once, let's just say 500 meg is kind of like the upper limit 
of where passive probe technology, your regular like 10 to 1 probes, you can't get switchable ones like that. You'll get fixed uh, 10 to 1 uh, probes, but passive probes, that's pretty much where they die out. Yes, Tektronix do make a 1 gig passive probe, but eh, once you're up in that frequency range, you really start talking about active probes and proper, and your probing solution costs more than your scope sometimes, right? Right, you start getting into serious territory. So really, um, even at 500 meg, right, it's, it's really probing becomes really uh, serious business. So you know, like 300, 300 meg bandwidth, for example, even 200 meg bandwidth is pretty decent. It's going to last you for mo almost all general purpose um, requirements. So yeah, one of these uh, four channel jobbies, either of these is going to be a, you know, a very useful, I would say this is like, if you're going to start equipping an electronics lab, I'd, I'd consider this a minimum and then maybe step up. Yes, there are other models, but uh, it's been argued in the forum that this is at this $800 price point. The MSO 5000 is probably the best, best value and I don't necessarily disagree with that. Um, so I don't know, leave it in the comments down below if you've got a better choice. But yeah, um, yeah, you could step up for this. But in, anything over this, I think, yeah, is overkill and you're just wasting your money. You're better off saving that money and spending it on other stuff that you need for lab, like a decent uh, sol soldering iron. You might want a rework system, a fume extractor, you might want a thermal camera, you might want like nice ESD matting and nice side cutters and all sorts of tools and weird and wonderful things and power supplies and all sorts of, you know, tons of other, any specialized test equipment you need uh, for your niche stuff. So it's worth saving the money to like equip your lab with that extra stuff instead of having, oh, I've got a 500 mig bandwidth scope. So yeah, I see the value in stepping up from something like this, $400 price point to the $800 price point, you know, the bigger screen and the mixed signal analysis and, you know, the uh, way, uh, yeah, it's because this doesn't have a uh, wave gen either, you know, it's got the wave gen and it's got the higher bandwidth goes up to 350 meg and the little deeper memory and the more signal analysis stuff and, you know, also, you know, the user interface is going to be nicer and more flexible and all sorts of stuff, right? So I can see definitely the value in getting um you know like an 800 dollar price point scope for hobby use um once again it depends on your budget right some people think oh geez 400 bucks is a lot of money and fair enough right so uh, you know you may need a cheaper solution than that but um yeah i can't see the value proposition for hobby use for going above the 800 dollar price point i just can't see it I can't see it. Leave it in the comments down below if you disagree. But what extra do you get when you step above this $800 price point? More bandwidth? Okay, but as I said, then you start getting into how are you going to use this bandwidth, right? It's, it's just a waste of money if you just, oh yeah, I want a one gig scope. But then are you ever going to use it? Oh, but I'm into RF. And it's like... No, you're probably going to be using RF measuring. You're not going to be measuring RF signals direct and stuff. Very few people do that. Sure, there are niche requirements and stuff like that, but and like, no, right? Generally, you don't need a, you know, like over three or even, you know, let's say 500 meg uh, bandwidth scope, for example, for, you know, most general purpose uses. So you're just wasting your money going for extra bandwidth. Okay, it might have i mean eight gig samples per second i don't know the next price point above this where you get better than that of course this will halve uh, for channels and stuff like that you might get a better user interface you might get you know you might not like the rigol brand for example you might not like the siglent brand you might want to go for a key side or an rns uh, rns or something like that right um because you might like the user interfaces better and you know fair enough but i'm not seeing the value proposition there it doesn't really get you any extra like major features really it's just you know nice little bells and whistles maybe but is that worth going into the five digit territory for i'd say no so i would draw the line right here and say this is eight i'm going to say 800 bucks 800 bucks is the limit of overkill <laughs> for a ho hobbyist oscilloscope but leave your thoughts and comments down below because well it's you know it's a contentious thing and of course, we're talking about bench top uh, scopes here. We're not talking about like, uh, you know, here's the lowest price ones here. Um, of course, not the lowest on the market, but we're, we're just using uh, this website as a convenient uh, base. You know, you can get these uh, Picoscope ones, you know, for 129 bucks. And, and Picoscope make 
pretty good uh, scopes, although I haven't used the Pico um, scope software in a long, long time. But uh, yeah, like, and uh, there's DigiLens Z mods and whatever they are and stuff like that. But yeah, no, we're talking bench top scopes, right? When you once you start talking the bench top one, you know, like the, here's the Siglent two channel, for example, two hundred eighty nine dollars. As I said, if you can afford two hundred eighty nine bucks, I think you should probably pony up for the you know jump up to the four hundred dollar price point and get that four channels because that four channels is going to be way more useful i've sorted these by uh price here and uh, get the four channels right sure look you can get this instec one here's an instec um oh no it's two channels it shows four channels there oh, it ripped off now the cheapest four channel here is the uh siglent sds 1104 xu i think that's that is a different i siglent have so many like little variants on the ends of them i think the xe is the one that everyone um yeah i don't think the xe is better than the xu but anyway look there's a uh four channel instec one there if you like the instec uh user interface uh for example but around about that 400 dollar price point um the siglet the xe siglet of course is a bit more uh expensive than that it's 499 but i would like start at that 400 dollar price point as a minimum and get that bench top scope so yeah i'm gonna draw the line uh, at 800 bucks i'm not even going to extend it to a thousand bucks i'm going to say that if you spend more than 800 bucks on a hobbyist oscilloscope it's overkill and you've wasted your money <laughs> no seriously like you know you might have niche requirements and stuff like that and you might just prefer a different brand and like yeah fair enough okay but yep anything i bet you can get a really kick-ass scope for 800 bucks these days it's absolutely incredible and as i said you can hack this to 350 meg dual channel is it yeah dual channel arbitrary waveform gen mixed signal analysis and it's got all the lxi land stuff and it's got all the uh you know fast waveform updating and it's got all the signal analysis capability touch screen and you know like it's ah, come on right it's absolutely amazing but yeah that would last you for ever pretty much unless you have some niche or higher bandwidth or some other uh weirdo requirement because i don't see more expensive scopes add in any really you know just small little bells and whistles they don't add any like extra thing unless you went to some obscure like six or eight channel scope or something like that but eh, yeah nah leave it in the comments down below if you disagree that's my limit over 800 bucks overkill catch you next time <laughs>